okay so yeah I wanted to show you um, this array this is my um, stamping department and um, I have all kinds of different sets of alphabet stamps some of them are as tiny as that and they go as big as this this is ones I made myself because they didn't sell them big enough for me I wanted a really big voice so I use those and um, I cut out all kinds of shapes out of styrofoam to print with so there's one of my dogs I love styrofoam it's, it's, it's this stuff here and if that isn't cheap and cheerful I don't know what is I use that um, I love I love using unprecious materials to work with um, because it takes some of the preciousness out of art like so this is you know rolled this is packing stuff that comes in um, certain things when you buy it it's just a kind of cardboard with one half of the outside taken off it and it makes a fabulous printing surface because you you can get really great um, effects by using this so I use that sort of stuff I used there's bubble wrap um, really anything I can get my hands on that is um, there's a little maple leaf that was pressed into service, an actual real one. It's interesting because when you put enough paint on them, they turn into like leather, you know, like this is now a, practically a permanent thing that will last into the next millennium. Yeah, oh, and I'm also, sometimes I use presses, like when I'm working on paper on mat board, which has a little bit of a thickness to it, these are letters that are punches, so I can actually hammer the text into the paper and it you know it impresses itself in there that's kind of a neat effect too so that only works on paper yes it only works on paper that's right because because um, canvas isn't thick enough to you know I suppose if you had enough paint on it or plaster or some other medium that that, that was actually thick enough to impress into you could do that okay right now it's all acrylic I, I don't believe in um, using a bunch of gimmicks for like mm -hmm. the, you know how many mediums there are there's like 4,000 mediums yeah. and gels and tints and I get overwhelmed I, I, I just use paint and meat and I do use a medium to thin the paint a little bit but here's this is exactly what I did to get that all those ridges on this were done yeah they were done by putting the white paint on this thing and pressing this down here and then pulling it off and it actually sucked out the paint and that's what those ridges come from is, is pulling it away. I just uh, I just wanted to create something I don't know um, I love the texture you know I, I wanted to do something with this area um, it inadvertently created something interesting over here because some of the lines went into the dark here so I've got this happening which is quite interesting Whereas before I had a pristine line yeah. up there. A photo of mine, a raven. Oh, cool. That so I took. A photo, and did you actually cut it out? Or yeah. Did you tra did you no, cut no, I transfer? cut it out. I don't really know about fancy transfers. It's just collaged. This is just a collage as well of a photo of me as a girl. So it's, it's styrofoam, a thin layer of styrofoam, and I glue it onto mat board and then, and then cut it out. And then you can use it over and over? Yeah, again. you can, yeah. Because um, they're different every single time you print. That's what an, that's what an original print is. Mm -hmm. each, each one is an original print because they're all different. You can't, you can't get them the same. So I, I have a ton of things here that I have used before. Um, some of which are quite, uh, can be quite elaborate. Like this, for example. This is a very elaborate, um, oh sorry, I think I just threw that at you, um, graphic of a girl. So I just put black paint on this thing and printed with it. Cool, and so the black part is the highest part, obviously. Of, the, of this, your, yeah. Yeah. That's right. It's amazing. It looks yeah. wonderful. You can do a lot of, this is a very elaborate stamp, you know, that takes quite a bit of work. Or you can just do something very, very simple like that. That's just a simple bird and I've scored into it with uh, a pen or mm -hmm. as you mentioned a blunt pencil gets you the texture. Oops, I'm just wrecking its feet. Let's see. 
And so the, you know, the actual drawing and design and making of the stamp happens only once. And only it's only it once, part yeah. Of the repertoire. Yeah. And it's different every time you use it, depending on what surface you're putting it on. Like this was pretty rough. There was quite a bit of paint on here already. So it really affected what this print looked like. And it, and it will every time. They'll be different every time. Yeah, yeah. These are all stamps. Every single one of these images behind here are, are styrofoam stamps. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I thought it was some kind of vintage fabric. I know, something. that's what I wanted it to yeah. look like. Yeah, they're just, um, I can show you what some of them look like. Here's two of them here. So this is the oak leaf looking thing. Okay. Right, that's just styrofoam. And there it is printed there, there, there. And, and this is another little leaf shape that got and printed so there. Did you print it over top of that background color or did you put that background No, it's color? hard to say. There's a lot yeah. on here. You can see all this paint. There was a lot of other stuff there. Um, some of the, uh, it was pretty light colored when I put all these on it. Mm -hmm. And then I have rubbed this other color in since then. To make to, it look more faded. To, to dumb it back, yeah. yeah. I didn't want it to be graphic. I wanted it to be a fabric that she would live with. It would be in her drapes or her living room. Or I use little tiny things too, like nails. That's a nail head. But it makes a beautiful, beautiful little circle that I don't want to take the time to paint. Right. You know? And it's not perfect. It's only part of it right. that shows. But that's what I love about so it. So you dip the nail. Oh uh, no! I just brush. I, n n oh, I. just brush some paint on it. Yeah, I just brush some paint on it, and then print with it, and it makes a beautiful partial circle. But there's something perfect about it. I love the perfection. I don't want to have to take the time to paint it, but I get I get some perfection in the middle of kind of chaos. You know, something like that. I, yeah, I mean, lids, I paint, I, I mean, I use lids all the time to, to um, make circles. I don't know if there's anything in here right now, but like here's an example of a scrap of styrofoam right here. Oh, wow. And it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful shape. perfect round, but I didn't want to draw it. Um, I cut this out. I actually made another circle. Somewhere down here there's another circle and it was too big and so I shaved a part of it off and that's what this is. But I just saw that there and thought this is beautiful. Just right like that. But you see it wouldn't look nearly as good if it was all black. No. See how fabulous it is because it's not? It is. Yeah. And it also wouldn't look as good if you'd painstakingly oh. taken a brush and tried to oh. get it. It would look studied and yes. and rehearsed and anal and, and you know yeah it just uh, yeah so I love printmaking because it's so immediate and you can't paint that effect I couldn't have painted it yeah. that's about as big as I work it's three by four feet yeah and um, yeah and I've, I've uh, I mean I've made a total mess you have to make a mess you can't make art in a pristine room. I'm always telling people, especially women, you have to make a mess. You can't do it in a room where you're carpeted and you're trying to protect everything. I mean, I am trying to protect. I have an oak floor under here um, that I have trying to protect and I've got chloroplast on the wall here to try and mitigate some of the uh, mess that I'm making on the wall. But ultimately you have to throw the paint around. You can't be worried about it or you will hold it back. Yeah. I'm making a mess. It's my house, so I guess I can. <laughs> it's like we're always having to give ourselves permission, right? I'm continually moving the permission line because I'm always up against something, some other way that I didn't think I could do something or I didn't think I was allowed to do something. And really, it's just continuously um, moving that line of what is allowed moving it further out to give me a wider uh, range. Which is kind of where your art and your feminism intersect, I would imagine. Oh yeah, that's a great way of looking at it, yeah. I, I think they do, yeah. I would say they do, because my art, even though my subject matter isn't necessarily feminist, um, you know, it's pretty thinly veiled in some of it, like the women I'm doing, and even this. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's not political. The political work is, is in my performance where I do all these, I dress up, I, I'm a scientist from the Ladies Institute for Endless Rectification and I have a lab coat and everything with, my, with everything embroidered on it and <clears throat> I give PowerPoint presentations about etiquette and that's a feminist performance piece. But it's not, a, it's not visual art, you know, it's performance. So. But it's a lot of fun. And I find my voice coming through really clearly and loudly in that as a feminist. You know, that's my feminist work and the painting, although it's in there, I, it's in there. You don't have to look very, very far, I think, to see that it's, it's very much centered on women's experience. Yeah.